Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. And then we're going to read Isaiah chapter 8. Well, we'll just go there in a second. Uh, just go to Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 12, the NLT version. And uh, did anyone bring their bills or their contracts or anything yeah. like that? Yeah. All right, this is going to be a short message. Then we're going to pray, and then we're going to go home. Amen. Okay. Uh, I love the scriptures, so I like to read, and I like to teach the word of God. Amen. What's the purpose of shouting if you're ignorant? All right. So in all that getting, get understanding. So may you understand today who you are in Christ. You got to understand that Jesus is not a religion. He is the son of the living God. He is not a what? A religion. He is God. All right. Now I'm going to show you who you are. You know, okay. Jesus said, if you see me, you see the me and my father are. All right. Okay, Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 11. NLT, please. Hebrews 2, starting verse 11. So now Jesus. Now who? 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 Jesus. All y'all say it. Now who? Jesus. Go ahead. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy. The ones. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now Jesus and the ones. He makes holy. I like that right there because you can't make yourself holy. It is Jesus who makes you holy. And if you decide to follow him, he will make you holy. Stop trying to make yourself holy. You cannot make yourself holy. Self-righteous people will try to make themselves holy. Okay? You cannot make yourself holy. All right. Who makes you holy? Jesus. So if you have Jesus in your life, you are considered so tell yourself you're holy. I'm holy. Say it again. I'm holy. Say it again. I am I'm holy. Say it again. 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 I'm holy. Close your eyes and say it. I'm holy. I'm holy. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> say it like just Jesus made me holy. Jesus made me holy. Close your eyes and say it. Jesus made me holy. No, say it again. Jesus made me holy. Mm. Say it again. Jesus made me holy. Okay, what is holy in the Greek? Is this okay? Are you following me? I feel good. Amen. Hallelujah. Soto Bokosha. All right. Go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it for you. All right. Let me check this in the Greek real quick. You, you got it? Go ahead. To render or acknowledge, to be venerable or hollow, separate from profane things, uh -huh. dedicate to God, mm -hmm. consecrate things, to be holy, venerate, purify. Mm, you're purified. Okay. Declared sacred. Oh, you are declared sacred. sacred. You are declared what? Sacred. Or to make sacred. Or to make sacred. So God made us sacred. sacred. So what does sacred mean? Now, you think you're a victim. <laughs> but to God, you are sacred. Okay. Sacred. Connected with God. Oh! Dedicated to a religious purpose. <laughs> no. <laughs> connected, connected to who? God. Connected to who? God. So if you see sacred, you see God. Yeah, that's right. Because who's holy? God. God. Who made us holy? God. Amen? Yes. So you are what? Sacred. So when you know you are sacred, you will separate yourself from things. That's right. True. Because you know who you are. Yeah. Am I making sense? Yes. You are what? Sacred. You are not a survivor. 
You are holy. You are sacred. All right, so let's, let's, let's continue reading. Um, well, you got more to read? Yes, sir. All right, read. So now, Jesus, and the ones he makes holy have the same father. Have, ooh. Wait, have the what? Have the same father. Not the same religion. No, the same father. The same what? Father. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. father. Hmm. So Jesus and you and me, we all have one father. Mm -mm. Not God. We have one what? Father. We have what? Father. We have a what? Father. So it's just one father. One father. One father. One father. One father. Jesus called God Father. Jesus was the son of the living God. And if you believe in Jesus, he makes you holy. And if he makes you holy, he renders you sacred. And if you are sacred, you are now one with Christ. That means you have the same we just read over this and we don't even understand, you know, we just brush it off like it's just a saying. But let's continue. Watch this. Have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Okay. <laughs> Jesus is not just your Lord. He is your brother. Now, it's hard to see that. It's hard to think that. Because we're conditioned to believe that Jesus is up here. And he is up here. But he also brought you, he also brought you up to where he is. We are seated with him. I didn't say this. The Bible said that Jesus said that we are brothers and sisters. No, I'm not ready to be a brother and sister. I'm not ready to be a brother. You're too holy, Lord. I don't want to take your glory. And he is not ashamed to call you his sister. He is not ashamed to call you his brother. Why? Because you have the same father. What does that mean? We see family. Family is great, greater than friendship. Y'all don't like what I'm just, I just. So God is just not your friend. Uh, so even if you mess up, the blood makes you loyal. No, no, no. Even if you mess up, his blood demands him to still be loyal. <laughs> If your kids mess up, do you just kick them out? No. Why? Because they come from you. That's right. Come on. That's right. If you kick them out, you kick yourself out. Now, now, let me help you. If your kids acting crazy and they're like 19 and 20, kick them out. But I hope you understand what I'm saying here. It's hard to kick yourself out because of blood. So blood makes you loyal. Even, with your, even if your child pisses you off, yeah. yep. the blood still makes you loyal. It's true. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Is this okay? Yeah. Uh, all right? Yeah. So now, God gave us his blood. Yeah. That's right. It's true. Yeah. And that blood was shed on Calvary, yeah. on the cross. Yeah. That blood makes God loyal. Yeah. How he responded to Jesus when he was on the earth is the same way how God will respond to you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Jesus, you're you think it's a different relationship. Yeah. But he called us his brothers yeah. okay. and sisters, and we have one father. So God responds to you just as how he will respond to Christ. Yeah, that's right. It's true. Yeah. 
Because how, how did God see Christ? He seen him, he saw him as holy, righteous, perfect. So how does God see you? Holy, righteous, perfect. Wait, I messed up. You're holy, righteous, and perfect. We can't get anything from the Father because we're running away from him. What's causing us to run away from him? Our mindset, how we think, how we see ourselves. We believe that we're no longer worthy for the blessings that are in the house. Is this me? All right. And, and you are worthy to be blessed. You are worthy to be promoted. You are worthy to receive God's love. Hello. But God, I'm going through. So I don't care. You still have one. Father. Come on, y'all, y'all kids, right? Yeah, yeah. I, okay, sometimes we have dysfunctional homes. I, you know, <laughs> I understand. But for the most part, a parent will not neglect their child. Yeah. They will whoop them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, I will beat my kids. <laughs> Let them get out of line. You know, back in the day, you used to have a switch. Remember the switches they, the, in down south people? They call it the switch. They take all the leaves off, and it's just a twig or like a, a branch. And, and they'll just whoop you and pow, pow. You will carry the evidence of love. Oh, them switches kept me in order. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Try to call the cops on me. I will beat my kids right in front of the cops. <laughs> I'm like, yup. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not beating them because I'm ungrateful or I'm, abus- I'm an abuser. No. I beat them. I know beat sounds like, uh, it's it's not a good word to use. I, 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 you know, discipline or I do a little pow pow. (laughs) I don't know. I, you know, I discipline them. Love disciplines. But an abuser don't understand the word discipline. Yeah. They have a different meaning. So they will cross boundaries. Right. So instead of spanking their children, they'll punch them in the face. Yeah. Like, you know, you, 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 you need help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Yep. I know how to restrain myself when I'm disciplining. Right. And I don't even hit my kids. Do I hit y'all? No, no, no stand up, homie. Do I hit you? No? Okay. Right, okay. I, but they have and they know I can. I have the ability. It's just the words, you know? It's the what? Authority. All right. So God knows how to correct his own. Yes. That's right. He knows how to he knows how to discipline his own. Amen? Yep. And if you can't receive d- correction from the Father, then the Bible says you are a bastard. Yeah. Yep. So love corrects. Yeah. Right. Love protects. Yeah. And God is not a statue. He is your Father that will correct you and love you. Yep. That's why he's the head of the man. He's the head of the fathers. Yeah. All right, whatever. <laughs> Amen. Because God, when he disciplines us, he has to restrain himself. Because if he just go all out, we're done. <laughs> just imagine, God. <laughs> so Jesus made us Holy, and we are now children 
of God. We have the same Father. Now, what does that mean? We're going to get a little bit into it and I'm finished. All right? No, I'm a Catholic. No, you are a child of God. No, I'm Pentecostal. No, you are a child of God. No, I'm Baptist. No, you are a child of God. Here it goes. No, I'm a Christian. No, you are a child of God. Know the difference. Because even Satan could be a a Christian. (laughs) Yeah, Satan knows how to be a Christian. He knows how to be a good one. Huh? But Satan can never be a son. That's why Satan couldn't handle the son when, he, when the son was in his habitation. Whose, hab- whose habitation? The serpents. Satan doesn't know how to handle you. Because you are a child of God. The, the same DNA, the DNA that you have in you is the same DNA that Jesus had in himself. So you carry the same DNA as God. And because you carry the same DNA as God, Satan can't handle you. Because Satan does not have the same DNA that you have. But the DNA that you have created the one that can't stand you. But who, watch this, because who created everything? And you have the DNA of God. So who created Satan? God. Amen. God. <laughs> and who's going to cast Satan into the lake of fire? God. So why are you crying and complaining about a demon God. that is under your authority? Oh. <laughs> you don't know that you are a child of God. Okay, this is, this is, can I get deep? No, not deep. Just, it's just a reminder. Let's go to John, uh, and then we got to go back to Hebrews chapter 2 again and read the rest because I want to get somewhere real quick because supernatural things will begin to happen. No, wait, for real. If you get this word in your spirit, you will walk like a God. I promise you. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) John 10, I believe, 34. Let's go. You know the famous scripture. Let's go. Let's go. God, I'm going through. Okay. But you are a son. You are a daughter. You carry his DNA. Please. <laughs> to many that received them, to them he gave them to the power to become children of God. God has given us power to become his child or his children. Am I making sense? His sons or his daughters. All right? So you have the power to be a child. You have the power to be a daughter. You have the power to be a son. You do not have the power to be a religious numbnut. <laughs> you know when you're in your house, you're free. Yep. Yep. Wait, no. Those that know, that pay their bills, you know what I'm saying. Not the children. Well, the children's next, but for the parents out there that pay their own bills. You know when you first get your house, the Adam and Eve story begins. Because you will walk freely. No worries. No care. People still wonder what I'm thinking. Adam and Eve were naked in the garden. When you have your house, the first time you move in, yep, yep. you are what? <laughs> am I lying or am I? Who owns their own properties and who lives on their own? Who lives there on their own? Raise their hand. You cannot tell me when you, did, when you moved in 
you didn't walk around the house freely. You was just like this. No, not in someone else's house. In your house. I rebuke that spirit if you doing that is. It better be your house. If it's someone else's house, you will be arrested. Apostle said I could be free. <laughs> but you notice when you have your own house, your own spot, you are free. Now, even as a child, you are free. I mean, you're not walking around but naked, but we know that you are naked. But in your room, you can. You have your own space to be free. And then within the house, you come down with your shorts. My son likes to come down with his shirts off and... And my daughter comes with something. <laughs> you know more. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I'm, I'm learning this father stuff because uh, she's getting old, older, right? She's like, she what, you're 15? She's about to turn 16? You know, she's developing. And one time she put on the bathing suit, and I got to. <laughs> you know, I'm learning, man. <laughs> All right, let me, let, me, let me shut up. I'm sorry, honey. But I'm talking about freedom. God made Adam and Eve naked. Why? He wanted freedom. And so when you meet God and you, just, and you make that decision and say, God, I want you to be my father. I receive your son, Jesus Christ, because Jesus will empower me to become a child of you. Are you hearing me? When you make that decision, God wants you to be free. I'm not talking about freedom in a sense you do whatever you want to do because every house has a structure. The freedom I'm talking about is you not being afraid to come to your father when something happens or when you mess up. Because he sees all, and he, he sees all, and he knows all. He just wants you to come to him freely. I'm boring, y'all. No, no, no. You're blowing. Wow. Make, make it sense? Yes. Freedom. Come, do not come to God as a religious person. Oh, Heavenly Father, you know me. <laughs> Heavenly Father. <laughs> Father God. <laughs> The glory and the... And he's just like this, all right? Just imagine your child. Glorious mother. <laughs> now, you be like, yo, ma. Hey, dad. Father. The disciple was like, hey, Lord, teach us how to pray. Our Father. Not my Father. Jesus responded and he said, our Father, who's art in heaven or who's in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. You know that prayer, right? We like to quote it, but we don't understand it. Right? He is our Father. You are not, you're, listen, you're not a Christian. You are a child of God. I want this to hit your spirit. You are a child of God, not a religious nut. You can still have swag and still be holy. You don't have to wear a dress. If you want to wear it, amen. All right. No, you got to say to them, I'm not going there. <laughs> God wants us to be what? Free. The Bible says, come as you 
Well, I don't know if that's scripture, but let me just tell you. Come as you what? Are. Don't try to fix yourself and then come. Because when you're born, you can't clean yourself. When you birth a child, that child cannot clean itself. That's right. Who cleans the child? When Adam tried to clothe himself, God was like, no, you can't do it. And who clothed Adam? God. Because God is responsible to clothe you. That's why he says, don't even worry about tomorrow. You know, because your father knows what you need before you can even ask. He knows how to take care of you. But do you know that you are a child of him? You'll give me five more minutes? Did I go to the go to scripture? Yeah, let's go there real quick. Yeah. John 10, starting verse 34. Yeah. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. You are what? Gods. You are what? Gods. You are what? Gods. You are what? Gods. Say, I'm a god. I'm a god. No, close your eyes and say, see, are you afraid to say it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, you, you know I didn't write this. We're just reading. Close your eyes and say it. I'm a god. Say it like seven times. No, you try to rush it. See? You try to let shh. This is y'all. Okay, he said seven times. I'm a god, I'm a god, I'm a god, I'm a god. The reason why I want you to say it, because I want your spirit to hear you. And, you, and once your spirit connects with your words, then you will believe it. Yeah. You know how, it, okay, it's hard for you to say I'm a millionaire or you're a millionaire, right? Yeah. It's hard to say I'm a millionaire. It's hard. It's okay. Okay, it's, maybe it's easy. It's hard for you to say I will make $10 million because it's, it's, it's far-fetched. So you don't even want to say it because it's not real, realistic. It's, it's not a reality. So you don't even want to open your mouth. Oh, it just happened to me. It's just... But I guarantee if you continue saying it, your spirit will catch on. And once your spirit hooks up with your words, then the mind shifts. Now you're able to see what you need to do because you're in agreement with your spirit. Am I making sense here? Now, close your eyes and say, I'm a God. I'm a God. Go ahead. I'm a God. Say, I'm a God. Say it again. I am 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 a God. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Gods are not depressed. Gods do not deal with anxiety. No, okay. Anxiety will come, but gods know how to defeat. How to defeat it. That's right. You're talking right. The weapons of the enemy. Yes. Because our God defeated the grave. Is this all right? No? Close your eyes and say it again. I'm a God. I am a what? Say it again. Say it again. Oh my God. Say it again. 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 Close your eyes. Say it again. Say it again. He broke out with me. She left me. Who are you? We know that she didn't say Christian. So now go ahead. <laughs> it's nothing wrong with being a Christian, but hear what I'm saying. We don't have time for religious debates. That's why you see miracles in this house. And people fight this house. Why? Because we are. Read. Go ahead. 
Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God's. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture cannot be what? Broken. That truth cannot be broken. That you are a God. Where is it written that? Go to Psalms 82. I'm just here to bring things back to your remembrance, but we're going to get deep in a second. Well, Psalms 82. Go ahead. You ready? Psalm 82 and verse 6, I said you are gods. No, I said what? You are gods. I said. I said you are gods. So Jesus is quoting from this text. I said you are. God. No, I am Catholic. No, I said you are. God. Go ahead. And all of you are children and of the all, Most High. God. And all of you. <laughs> he, he tried to speak in tongues, but it hurt. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. But I, what? I said you are God. I said you are God. And all of you. And all of you are children of the Most High. So if he gave you power to become a child, he's basically saying if uh, you are a God. Because children are gods. Children are, you know when you have a child, you're like, does he look like me? No, 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 I think, listen, I'm, <laughs> okay, I'm the minority in my family. All my kids are white. I'm the only black man. <laughs> Why are y'all looking at me? My son looks like my, uh, his mother. My daughter looks a little bit like me. Thank you. But as a parent, you're trying to locate your image within your child. So when God gives you his spirit, he is trying to locate his image within you. So he's like, okay, can I see myself in my child? You put up, no, I'm dealing with something. No, I'm a Baptist. I'm not looking for a denomination that is designed to have dominion over you. I'm trying to look for my image. Because once you carry his image, everything that came from his image will respond to you. That's why when I come to someone and they have cancer, that cancer has to respond to the image. Oh. See, now you understand this truth, you can call your money. All right. You about to make it sense? It's coming along. All right. So now, now go back to 10 and, and, and verse 34. Am I helping you? Are you a child of God? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. So please don't leave out of here after service. And then on Monday, you're singing, beat it, beat it. <laughs> because the enemy is knocking you upside the head. And you're like, dang, I have nowhere to go. And I can't do this and that. And I don't know what to do, Lord. You carry my DNA. Yeah. Do you know who you are within me? If that wall sees you, it sees me. That's why Jesus says, if you see me, you see the Father. Why? Because I carry the image, and we have now the same Father. Ooh, no, y'all don't like this. Oh, you carry his blood. That's why we take communion. We eat of his flesh and take of his blood because we've become in one with the same body that conquered the grave. If that body conquered the grave, who can conquer you? Who has the ability to conquer you? That means you can go up in school and say, I will graduate. Y'all not talking to me. You, you could be, you were about to take a test and you could just speak in tongues, la brababa sota, and the spirit would open up your brain. 
Y'all not, y'all not talking to me. Am I helping somebody? You are a... Why? Because you are a child of God. And he made you holy. You have to grow into perfection. My child is not trying to make him or herself perfect. They have to grow in to perfection. I'm born, y'all. I'm knocking that flesh. I want you to get this because you are depressed and you are heavy and God cannot use you because you're too heavy and you're complaining about what you're going through and God is saying you're a supernatural being and I'm living inside of you. Now let's go to work. You can call those things that be not as though they Why? Because you carry his DNA, which is his spirit. Are y'all hearing me? One more scripture. All right, go ahead, read. Just going to get to it. Verse 35, if he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father sanctified? No, who the father what? Sanctified. So the father made Christ... Holy. I don't have time to deal with that. Go ahead, read. Yeah, I know I have this iPad, but I'm trying to give you a Do you you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God? Because I said what? I am the Son of God. Say it again. Because you said. You are blaspheming because I said, I am the Son of God. So he's basically saying, you're saying I'm blaspheming because I'm saying I'm a child of God. And the religious leaders knew that if you call yourself a child, then you're calling yourself a God. Because you are gods and all of you are children of the most high. So that's why he came to empower you to become a child because once you are a child then you are a god yeah. that's why jesus is not afraid to call you a brother or a sister yeah. why because you carry his dna oh my god. <laughs> am i making sense here now watch this okay go back to hebrews and just read and i'm finished hebrews chapter what two yes hebrews two Starting at verse 11. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy. Yes. Have the same father. Have the what? Same Same father. Go ahead, read. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. Come on, read. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. Oh, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. So why did Jesus come on the earth? To proclaim God's name. He basically came to say, your son. You're a daughter yeah, that's right. of the most high God. That's right. Don't get it twisted. You are a new creation yeah. in Christ Jesus. No, no, you are a new creation. Yeah. You're not the same creation that was in the garden. That's right. See, we don't believe this to the point we will go to witches and sorcerers and, and mediums just to try to get some guidance. Not knowing you are greater, you are greater than a witch. Yeah. Yeah. It's wicked. I'm, I'm gonna preach this thing. Okay, you ready? One more. Let's go. Read. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name. Yes. To my brothers and sisters. Come on. I will praise you among your assemb- assembled people. Go I ahead. will praise you. Go ahead. I will praise you among your assembled people. Come on. He also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children God has given me. No, no. Jesus said, what? I will put. I will put my trust in him. And what? That is, I and the children God has given me. I and the children that God has given me. Why? Because Jesus made us holy. He made us children of God. Are y'all following me? Where is that scripture written? Go to Isaiah 8. And this is the last scripture of today. Are you ready? Yes. Because now you're going to catch a glimpse 
of who you really are and what you're supposed to be doing. God help me. You ready? I think uh, Isaiah 8 and 18. Yes. Yes, go. Here, uh, Isaiah 8 and 18. Here am I in the children whom the Lord has given me. No, verse 17. Verse 17. Verse 17. I will wait for the I, Lord. I will wait for the Lord who has turned away from the descendants of Jacob. I will put my hope in him. Mm -hmm. I in the children the Lord has given you me. You remember, they're quoting the scripture. I and the children, yep. right? Yep. Who the what? Who the Lord has given me. Yep. Serve as signs and warnings. No, wait. What? Serve as signs. And warnings to Israel from the Lord. Now, New King James. Yeah. That he, same verse. Here am I and the children whom the Lord has given me. Uh huh. We are for signs and wonders. We are for what? Signs and wonders in Israel. Wait, so don't you know that because you are a child of God, you are a sign and a wonder? So you're supposed to be creating signs. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're supposed to be, oh, yeah. The Bible says signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Because if you believe, you're telling God you are a, you're a child. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yes. And if you're believing that you are a child, if you believe that you are a child, signs and wonders follow. are following you. They don't want to be behind you. They want you to reveal them. When Jesus went to the fig tree, yep. <laughs> he got mad because the fig tree was not equipped to feed him. So he cursed the fig tree. The next day, the fig tree dried up. A sign. My sister here. Her, her, one of her co-workers was pissing her off at the job. Yeah, I've said this one. And so she came last year to the Exodus night, right, New Year's Eve. And I went right up to her. And I said, while I was preaching, then I went right up to her. I removed her. Yeah. A few months later, she left. Wait. That's a sign. That's a wonder. When a no is present, and you're walking with your artillery, signs and wonders. No, 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 no. When you come up to that no, to that opposition, you don't run away. You invoke. You provoke things. You will cause things to happen. You will not remove yourself from the place. Mm, okay. God destined you to be at a certain place where you want to remove yourself because of the opposition, but you carry artillery. You carry his DNA. When the enemy try to hit your family, you don't just run away and cry. Mm -mm, you tell the devil, come on. Y'all don't like this. Y'all, am I just okay? No, you want God to help you. Who has a little kid in here right now? Can, will they come? Can, 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 will he come? All right, no. All right, just imagine a little kid is, is you know, having a tantrum on the floor. Your child. And you tell him, all right, come on, let's go. No, I don't want to go. No, I want to go. Or he's just trying to move around. You won't help him. You will wait for him to use his strength that comes from you. You'll like, be like, I'm not picking you up. You better get up and come on. Most Christians want God to treat them like they're handicapped. And God is like, listen, you carry my DNA. You carry my strength. I'm waiting on you to wake up so you can walk like me. Am I making sense? Am I making sense or no? Who am I talking to? Who told you to wait?
it's time for you to move. Make things happen because you have the backing. You have signs and wonders, and you also have faith, and you also a child of God. Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? God is saying today, I made you a sign. I made you a wonder. I also made you a warning. Are you hearing me? You're not a ball full of depression. You carry his spirit. That means you have more power than the witch. When you understand this truth, you could be sleeping and you will begin to travel. And God will begin to show you where you need to go. And God is not in the business to treat you like you're a handicap. He's waiting on you to wake up to the strength that he has given you. And then when you get up, you will say, I could do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You will receive strength from God. Do you understand? Not just from a human being, but from a God. And when God supplies his strength, nothing will be impossible. All things will be possible to them that believe. Am I making sense? Was this good today? Your house, this flesh, is not the real you. That's why when someone dies, the spirit goes, they're motionless. Because the real you or the real them left the body. This is just a shell. Are you hearing me? That's why the shell gets tired when truth is being dispersed. Am I the only one? Let me help you. I remember I was in Canada, and I was hearing my grandfather, my spiritual father's father, and he was preaching for eight hours. Well, six well, maybe five. I don't know. <laughs> but the service was over. <laughs> Amen. But the word was, it was coming. And my brother, the word came. And my brother on the left was sleeping. My brother on the right was sleeping. Then my eyes. Was <laughs> <laughs> but once service was over, I had a burst of energy. And I was just like, oh, we about to go and check Canada out. Yeah. Let's go to Toronto or something. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that energy come from? Yeah. So was I really tired? Oh, come on. Come on. Or was it my house yeah. telling me to go yeah. because your house wants to dominate you? Yeah. Jesus. Your house wants to dominate you. Your house, your body, your flesh that has a contract with your environment, with society, will tell you you have limits. Jesus came to destroy the house that wanted to, wanted to uh, dominate you. He came into the body and destroyed the body on the cross and then told us there's no limits. That's why when Jesus got up, he was walking through walls. When Jesus was on the earth, he was walking on water. Y'all not talking to me because his house cannot stop who he really is. And plus, we are members of that house. So who told you to put limits on yourself? 
Commitment has a contract with sacrifice. Is this okay tonight? Was this all right? I'm going to do part two, right? Of, of your house has no limits. So next Sunday we'll be here and we'll talk about your house that has no limits. See, you want to be your house. No, don't. You have to allow the spirit man to grow within you, the real you, through the knowledge. So you have to learn about Christ so growth could come. And if you're powerful in your spirit, demons will recognize you. Witches will run away from you. Witchcraft, spells. We'll just play. We can't, we can't touch this house. Because we know the image. Who am I talking to? Am I speaking to gods up in here? Am I speaking to people that will make a conscious decision to rise and walk as a God baby? Oh, so this is the season, this is the time that you have to begin to call those things that be not as though they were. You're not looking to see. You're looking to create. Y'all don't understand. And what does create mean? It means bringing something into existence. That means it exists. But it's in the unseen. But you have to bring it into existence. And so when you call those things that be not as though they were, you're bringing things into existence. Why? Because you, whatever you desired when you prayed, you believed. And you received it. Or you received them things. And the Bible says you shall. How do I have them? I'm bringing those things that I received into existence. Ooh, I'm bringing my business into existence. Y'all not talking to me. All right, I thought... Who am I talking? Y'all don't like me. Unique commitment. Your blessing needs your commitment. Your life needs your commitment. You can't just run because you are faced with a no. Uh, Y'all not talking to me. Irritate your opposition. Don't allow your opposition to irritate you. Who am I talking to? God never made you a runner. We walk by faith and not by sight. We don't have time. We don't have time to run away from people. Who the hell? Why am I afraid of you? The Bible tells me the Bible told me to fear no man. I only fear who? God. Am I talking? And you just sitting up there saying, Lord, when? Lord, how? Lord, it's taking too long when you have a mouth. And oh the don't you know you have a freaking mouth? Touch your mouth. Just touch it. <laughs> Sometimes that breath get hot, but you know. <laughs> Am I talking? You have a what? And then, but the scripture says, death and life is in the power of the tongue, of the mouth. No, death and, but the enemy wants you to prophesy death. So he will bring things to you to control your mouth. You need to tell yourself, not today, not today, not today, not today. You can leave me all you want. I know who I am. I know whose I am. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't allow anyone to control your mouth. Stop speaking down on yourself as if you're a nobody. You are somebody. You are a somebody. You are a God. Do you, you know your mouth is not used to flip out. You know, some people are nice and slick with the mouth. 
I'm a little slick too. I got to stop. No. But we use our mouths for the wrong things. Instead of you, you need to use your mouth for your destiny. That's what God used his mouth for. In Genesis, he used his mouth for his destiny. But you like to use your mouth to, to describe your drama. I'm going to. I don't have to. I don't have enough. That's me kicking someone in the face. They don't love me. They don't care about me. They don't do this. I have no support. Negro, you have a mouth, and God created your mouth, but he needs to fill you with his spirit so he can control your So now this, right now, this week is the week that you will begin to bring things into existence. No, I don't think you believe it over here. Let me try here. Wait, I'm not talking about tomorrow or next year. I'm talking about right now. Your supernatural week starts now. No. I'm not hearing what I'm saying. Who am I talking to? Your supernatural week starts. This week will dictate 10 years. Will fix 10 years of your life. I prophesy this in the name of Jesus. I see angels in your week. Y'all not talking to me. Oh, I dare you to tell God to fill you up. He wants to fill himself. He feel he no. He actually wants to fill you up with himself. Because when he fills you up with himself, you will begin to speak. Because God is a speaking God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, and the Word was. Guess what? The Word is now flesh. And it's time to bring things into. You don't have time to run away or tell God no or tell God it can't be. All of his promises are what? All of his promises are what? No, yeah, I see we like to quote it, but do you really, really know and make sure it gets into your spirit? All, not some. All, not some. I will not wait three years for a house. If I already received it. See, I'm just speaking for myself. You, I saw this thing on, um, let's sit down real quick. I saw this thing on IG and this guy, he's a Christian on podcast. He has a podcast. I don't know his name, but probably you've seen this. He said, hey, ask, ask, ask me for something. Paraphrasing, you know, just hoping I get the story right or the example right. He says, ask for the cup. So you stand up. Mm-hmm. You ask for the cup, take the cup. Ask for this. Ask for this. Ask for this. Mm-hmm. Now it's hard for you mm-hmm. I got it. to handle we're asking for things that we can't manage. Wow, wow. And we're telling God it's taking too long, but you don't you can't even hold all these things. Oh my, my God. But preparation helps you to become a better manager. Now when I ask for these things, I know. How to hold. Now the blessing is demanding me to be responsible 
So my focus is on my responsibility. Ooh. So I don't even have time for a girl when I have all of these things to manage. Am I making sense or what? But because you lack management skills, you want God to bless you. And God is willing to bless you, but you, are, <laughs> you will destroy the blessing because you don't know how to maintain. Yeah. You're talking right. You know how to maintain the blessing. Who am I talking to? I feel like I have a 40 in my hand. Yeah. <laughs> Who am I talking to? But this week, starting now, you will also begin to manage correctly. Yeah. That's why we tithe. Yes. Look at that. Awesome. That's why we what? Tithe. We don't break our tithe. We give the tithe. Because we're telling God there's increase. When we don't give, we're, God will not know. He's looking to see if you have increased. You have increased. It's true. And then once you say, I, I increased, yeah. I have increased. Oh, let me see. Yep, yep, yep. It's true. It's true. It's true. <sighs> yep. Ten years will be dealt with this week. I don't think y'all believe me in this house. The Hebrew boys destroyed the time in the, fir- in the fiery furnace because time was in the flame. Time was set to burn them up. So when you're thrown in a fire, the fire doesn't waste time. It burns you up in a second. But because God was in the mist, the fire had to delay. So the presence created time. Oh, God. And you carry God's DNA that has the ability to create time. So I don't care if you was faced with a delay years ago. I'm here to tell you, if you're under the influence of my voice, you God will reverse the time. Good God from Zion. Who am I talking to? God, is this real? Is this real? Yes, it is. I'm about to reverse the time. No, I'm not about to. I'm doing it now. Oh, yeah. The time that you lost. The time that you lost with people that are ignorant or that were ignorant. I'm reversing the time. The mistakes that you made. I'm reversing the time. Oh, God. Yo, that's why you got married. Because I'm reversing the time. Y'all not talking to me. Woo! God brought you in this house to let to remind you. I'm reversing. Guilt cannot exist when God is re- Am I talking? Oh no! I am prophesying. Y'all think I, y'all know I don't lie. Y'all freaking know that the God in me cannot lie. I'm telling you this week, God is reversing. <laughs> <laughs>